Rhythm games. Probably one of the better known genres in gaming, with so many different styles but still managing to have the same premise. Hit as many notes as you can. You got your Guitar Hero, Fortnite Festival, Quaver, Beat Saber, Dance Dance Revolution, Osu, the Kumra one, the Pedophile one, etc. One game though will forever stand out on its style and gameplay even 28 years after its initial release. With that being Parappa the Rapper. Before going any further, you should totally like and subscribe. In addition to that, I also have a Twitter and Discord server that are in the description. Go check them out. Anyways, my personal experience with the series started way back in 2017, when DanTDM uploaded a video about the remaster of the game, and I instantly fell in love with it. That being said though, I didn't actually end up playing it until around July of 2023, which was coincidentally right around the time that I finished all the Rayman games. At the time, I was really exhausted from playing platformers, so it was a really nice breath of fresh air, and I proceeded to play through all the games except for the remaster. But then, there was nothing left. There was only three games in total that I could play, which felt really odd to me because they were all really solid. So I went down a rabbit hole into the games, the studio, and its tragic decline to answer the burning question. How did we get to this point? This is gonna be a fucking gimmick, oh my god. Before diving headfirst into the game, there's a bit of preamble to this story. In 1993, the incredibly talented Masaya Matsura got interested in the prospects of making music-based video games, and so he founded the studio now known as Nana On Sha. It would take them three years to release their first game, which wasn't actually Parappa. Instead, it was a game called Tuning Glue, which was a Japan-only release until one fateful day in December. Parappa the Rapper was released and would become the founding father of the rhythm game genre. So, the game. Upon opening it up, you'll instantly notice its very unique style with 2D characters in 3D environments. The thing about this is that you'll see the characters twist around and sometimes even flip around, showing off that they're just paper thin. The story goes as follows. Parappa is watching a movie with his friend Sunny, who is Parappa's love interest and the main driving point of the game. She's also a flower? PJ who is a bear and he likes to eat things and he's pretty chill. And Katie who is their friend and is a cat. Also if it wasn't obvious enough, Parappa is a dog. After the movie is over, they head across the street to Chunky Burger. And while ordering, Parappa is absolutely fawning over Sunny, calling her the girl of his dreams to the point that when he has to order, who just gets a water? A couple of bullies show up and start hitting on Sunny until the game's antagonist with heavy quotation marks shows up. Joe Chin. Now I might be fucking stupid, I deadass thought that Joe Chin was called Joe Cool up until like a couple days ago, and I wrote Joe Cool throughout the entire script, so now I have to fucking- I've been going back and I've been fixing it. I, I probably should have looked it up beforehand, but I honestly just thought his name was fucking Joe Cool. Joe starts bragging like crazy to the point that the group just walks out of the burger joint, except for Parappa, who is just sitting there and thinks to himself that he's gotta become a hero. He fantasizes about beating up the bullies and then tries to think about how he could become a hero before saying his iconic phrase. Oh, I gotta believe! Somehow, he finds a dojo which is run by this onion guy called Chop Chop Master Onion. He offers to train him, but first he has to beat him in a rap battle. This is where the main part of the game happens. The way that it works is that the master will say something and then Parappa has to copy it, otherwise he fails and loses all motivation to keep going. The verses of the song are split into four lessons which get progressively harder. After Parappa finishes his training, we cut directly back to Joe, who is still going on about his triumphs and shit until he realizes that that everyone is gone. The group is now getting ice cream at Fat Donut. What the fuck are these names? They start talking about wanting to go to the beach before they realize that they need a car. That's when Joe Chin in all of his glory shows up in a super stretch limo 900. He invites the girls to go to the beach with him and Sonny says, only if the guys can come too. He says, sure and makes the guys sit in the back, which is like a solid 20 feet away from the front of the car. Joe immediately crashes the car, putting Parappa and PJ in a daze, where Parappa has a dream that he's driving a flying car with Sunny, and then decides it's time for him to get his license. This is where he meets the next master, Instructor Mussolini. She gives him a driving test, and he manages to make it through it and get his license, even though he's like, Probably the most reckless driver I think I've ever seen. After getting his license, he immediately takes his dad's car and drives off to find his friend. Once he does, they all go out for a drive with, like, 
Parappa's insane driving. Sonny starts to talk and he, without hesitation, starts to daydream about being on a cruise with her, resulting in the car getting totaled. Surprisingly, everyone's fine. And Parappa panics, knowing that he's gonna have to pay for the car, so he goes to the flea market where he learns to sell goods from Prince Fleaswallow. After doing that for who knows how long, because there's a time skip right after, and he has managed to get his dad and himself new cars, we are now in the future, and tomorrow is Sunny's birthday. So the gang, minus her, make a plan to get all the things that they need for the party. Caddy ends up being the set producer, PJ has to get the presents, which leaves Parappa to get the cake. How does he do that? Well, he goes to buy one, sees Jo Chin has a cake the size of his dick, trips and falls destroying the cake, and panics thinking that Caddy might hate him now. So the obvious choice here would to be to go back into the cake shop and buy a new cake, right? This is what he does, right? No. He decides to go on a live TV cooking show where they are making a seafood cake guaranteed to catch her heart. He makes the cake, goes home, decorates it a little bit, and then goes to bed all excited for tomorrow. At the party, everyone is having a great time. Parappa is devouring the cake and Joe fucking Chin is in the background dropping his cake. Caddy tells Parappa something and he looks like he's about to start tweaking when Caddy drags away a PJ leaving him alone with Sunny. The day soon fades into dusk. The two of them are having a fantastic time, and that's exactly when disaster strikes. This fucker has to use the bathroom. The biggest fumble of the century could happen right now, but he tries to endure the urge. He starts to hallucinate flying toilets and literally looks like he's about to pass out. Sonny just thinks that he looks manly and gets hearts in her eyes before asking him if he's gonna drive her home to which he says yes. On the drive home, he runs out of gas so he has to make a pit stop at the gas station and also go use the bathroom, of course. This is where everything goes to shit. This moment is his own personal second tower. There is a line to use the bathroom and it's not just any ordinary people. It's all of his masters. They decide to rap to see who gets to use the bathroom first, which results in Parappa getting to go first. He then gets back in the car, and Sunny, seeing how he is now, manages to lose all prior interest she had, and then she just falls asleep. Some more time passes, and now he's at home where he gets a letter. It's a private invitation to a party from some guy named Rodney. He almost instantly thinks of Sonny when he gets it because he's allowed to bring one friend with him. So he calls her and she agrees to come along. He picks her up, they go to the party, and Parappa gets called up on stage and then has to sing a song about believing in himself. The party ends and the group goes into a movie theater to specifically watch the end of a movie. And that's the game. So. What's the actual gameplay like? As mentioned previously, it's all about matching what the master says by repeating what he does on the controller with there being only six buttons for you to be able to press. X, square, circle, triangle, left bumper, and right bumper. The game will show you a bar at the top of the screen which indicates when it's your turn or not and what buttons you need to press. A big part is that it all needs to be done in time and not just at random intervals, which is why it's a rhythm game. There's also a score meter at the bottom left which ranges from cool, good, bad, and awful. At the start of the level, the meter is at good. If you do everything to perfection, the meter will slowly make its way up to cool with an indication of the word flashing rapidly. It's also important to note that if you hit extra notes that are in the pattern, you can also gain some extra score, which is never communicated with you, and I think that's great. Once you're in the cool area, the whole environment changes and everything gets a little fucked. If you are absolutely eating shit at a level, you'll go down to bad and even worse, the music starts getting off key with some animal-like noises in the background that tell you that you're doing bad. You're fucking awful at this game. The environment will change slightly, usually with the master getting mad at you or the place just falling apart, which implies that Parappa has some weird effect on the world with his words. If you make it down past awful, somehow, you fail the level and have to restart. Fun fact, there isn't a pause button. If you need to hear something or need to pause at all, that's too bad. You have to replay the whole level, which means you have to listen to the whole and The music is really good in this game. It's actually really nice to listen to. Personally, the best part of this game is when you get frustrated and just start mashing the buttons and rap say the most incoherent shit ever. The game itself is actually relatively short, with there only being six levels in total, resulting in a playtime of roughly two hours if you don't suck dick. There is a replay value to it though, and that's its immediate charm 
and trying to improve your scores to get to cool mode. That's kind of it. Upon the release, it was met to critical acclaim as this new format of gaming was born and would manage to sell over 3 million copies. People absolutely loved it, and it still sits at a 7 out of 10 on... I am DB. The success of the game led to the studio being able to make more games in the same strain as Parappa, such as the likes of Vib Ribbon, which is very stylistically different from Parappa and charming in its own way. Now, here's the fun part. Like with the Rayman video, I want to rank these games in a tier list again. Here's the issue though. There's so little games in this series that the scope of the tier list wouldn't be the same at all. So I've decided that not only will I rank the games, but the songs in the games too. Starting off with Parappa the Rappa, this game is an A tier through and through. While it has its shortcomings of it being so incredibly short and hard for some people to get behind, it had such a massive influence on gaming as a whole that it would be a disrespect to put it anywhere lower. The songs. I love all of these songs, and they've influenced my taste in music quite a bit ever since I heard them. So here we go. Chop Chop Master Onion's Rap. This song is okay. For an introduction, it's really fun and sets up the tone of the game really well. But I feel as if there's better songs in the game, which I'm gonna get to shortly, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. Solid intro, not really my vibe though. Number 2, Instructor Mussolini's Rap. This is iconic, at least to me. The step on the gas, step on the brakes thing was like a joke with my friends that we kept making in elementary school to the point that it got so annoying and we have not brought it up since. With that being said, I like this song. It's really funky and I love the piano and the instrumental. It makes everything feel so silly, which it is considering that this thing is driving a fucking car right now. Solid A tier. One of the better songs in the game. Oh my god, Prince Flea Swallows Rap is my favorite level in the whole game! I actually love the whole vibe of it. The beat and the lyrics are really tight, and overall, this song fucks hard. S tier, wholeheartedly. Next up is Cheap Cheap the Cooking Chicken's Rap. Fuck this song. I love the beat so much, but I really do not fuck with the voice of the chicken or the lyrics. Also, whenever you lose, she fucking lays an egg on your table out of rage. C tier. I love the beat, but I hate the lyrics. Next is the shitting song. I don't like this. The whole time they're talking about how they need to use the bathroom. The beat is once again fire, but the whole time you have to look at the characters' insanely uncomfortable faces and I hate it. Also, the cool mode is Parappa running towards a fucking toilet. It's, it's just so weird, man. C tier again. Last but not least is Parappa's live rap. This song is a great finale for the game as the model I got him a lame is a main part of the song. It's catchy, it can get stuck in your head easily, and it's also the first level where Parappa actually gets to take charge of the song instead of following his masters. Another S tier. And that's it. That's the whole game. After this point, the series would go somewhat dormant for the next couple of years, but during this time, Nana on Sha was cooking up a banger sequel. And in 1999, we got it. Parappa the Rapper on Jammer Lammy. Fuck is this? I wanted Parappa the Rapper too, and instead I got given this spin off about a lamb girl. I can't lie though, I'm a massive fan of this game. I didn't actually know that this game was a thing until last year, and I was hooked within the first level. As well as just being really fucking weird for no reason, but I think it's cool. Except for one part later, which I'll talk about in a bit. So the story starts off pretty similar to Parappa actually. It's the weird monster movie again with Lammy, Caddy, and a new addition, Masan, who only speaks like a fish crossbred with a beat. What the fuck is she even supposed to be? I the gang goes over to the burger joint from the first game and they talk about their band Milk Can. The two bullies also from the last game show up and try to hit on Caddy before she throws a guitar across the earth and it lands in Lammy's hands where she then beats up the bullies. It this shit isn't fucking real dude, what am I doing? The game then cuts to Lammy running down a corridor to the main stage worried that she's gonna be late for her performance. She makes it just in time to see the fuck ass onion is there to be the first level in the game Again, he sucks so much that everyone leaves the venue leaving Lammy in despair. Chop Chop Master Onion tries to console her by saying that he lost his dojo since the first game, but it still exists in his mind, and it has a casino in it too. I take back everything I just said about this character. Uh, he is the best influence on today's youth. He rides on top of a roulette before Lammy wakes up and realizes she's actually going to be late for her performance in real life, so she freaks out and runs out of the house only to stop at a building that's on fire because the roads are blocked. And she gets recruited to help the firemen put out the fire? Somehow, they manage to put out the fire, 
and get a shit ton of pizza from it. And she gets given a fire truck light. Of course, time has passed, so Lammy gets a move on before getting really bloated for no reason. I've been thinking about this since I did the Rayman yeah, video, but like... Do you think these games awaken something inside of people? She trips, ends up in a crowd of pregnant women, and the nurse thinks that she's in labor and just forces her inside of a building with all the other pregnant women. Before the song, they all give birth in unison. She has an apparition of the onion guy and then grabs a baby to use it like a guitar. She ends up leaving the place with a toy caterpillar, runs into a guy, and lands on his skateboard, which he then uses to try and catch a plane, which is just taking off in the middle of a city road. She makes it on to see the captain get a concussion, and then he thinks that he's back in the war, and Lammy is a cadet, so he tries to teach her how to fly. Before that happens though, he gets four more concussions, and is still able to function normally. The flight attendant comes over the intercom and says some shit about buckling up before talking about people in the plane's casino? Why the fuck is this world so obsessed with gambling? Lammy ends up flying the plane by some stroke of luck, and then lands it in a parking lot. This causes a massive explosion, which sends a shit ton of cars flying everywhere. Literally everything is on fire, and Lammy and the pilot are just fucking chill about it. The pilot then takes out his dentures and gives it to Lammy. I feel like everything I've said so far sounds like it was written by an AI or someone tweaking off of several doses of cocaine. She runs away to try and make it to the show before she realizes that she just doesn't have her guitar and probably left it on the plane, which is in the process of barely flying over her. Luckily enough, she's just right beside a guitar store, which she happily enters in hopes of buying one, which is what happens, right? Right? Lammy is subjected to show to a lumberjack beaver that she can cut down a tree into a guitar shape to use as a brand new guitar. Free of charge, of course. After demonstrating her skills and using a chainsaw, she only has two minutes to make it to the show, but she ends up tripping on a banana peel left by the goat PJ. Lammy dies. She comes back to life and performs at some random ass show with another band, and then after they do their hits on, they pull out a photocopier, which makes an evil and fucked up version of Lammy, who hates everything. And then Lammy goes into the photocopier and gets a lighter. She has has a flashback about the band and rushes over to the fucking venue and then it turns out everyone was getting there at the same time they do their performance and everything goes well even evil lammy showed up and oh my the end so what have we learned from this game if your answer was absolutely nothing you're right, there are a few design choices in the game that I think are neat and add to the world building. They're only seen in the cutscenes though. An example of this is that Joe Chin is just a crazy successful businessman now, and his face is just slapped onto almost everything. Every area is visually distinct and extremely different from the last, and despite the cutscenes being fucking insane, they really have a consistent flow of something that seems plausible until the birth level. Not only that, but if you didn't figure it out already, you don't rap in this game. Instead, you're given an electric guitar and have to use that for all the inputs. And honestly, I prefer it over the rapping in the first game. But that's probably just because guitar is like my favorite instrument ever, so I'm somewhat biased towards it. For the lovers of Parappa though, don't be too down because there's a whole extra storyline in the game where you get to play as Parappa. And he goes on his adventure with PJ and Sunny as they try to organize things for the band as asked by Caddy. Each cutscene is a day in the week and they get increasingly weird, as does everything else in this game. At some point, it just becomes a Joe Chin commercial talking about preserving wildlife and how he needs donations now before he starts talking about how people should buy his chainsaws. Parappa and PJ then end up trying to make their own band and just absolutely fail. PJ just doesn't play anything and Parappa has this weird guitar gyro cross before Joe Chin advertises his brand new laptop which is the size of a small house. And then it just ends. There's no conclusion to the Parappa and PJ side story. It just ends. Looking at the menu, there's actually a shit ton more content in the game. Besides the main story, there's the Parappa levels and even couch co-op, where someone plays as Lammy and the other plays as Rammy, which is the name of Lammy's sick and twisted alter ego. The game itself is actually a big step up from Parappa. The controls feel a lot more responsive and the inputs that you have to do feel a lot more fun to pull off. Solid S tier game. Now, the songs. Holy shit, the songs. They outdid themselves so much in comparison to Parappa. There's still a few misses here or there, but 
Here are the Sons ranked. The first Son with Chop Chop Master Onion. I fucking hated this guy in the first game, and I hate him here again. This Son makes me upset. I don't like the flow of it from start to finish, and it's nothing higher than a solid D tier. The Son of the Fireman is actually pretty fun. I love how funky the music in the level is, and the electric guitar goes really well with the song itself. Extra points for making the whole level take place in front of a burning building, where if you fail, everything goes to shit. Chop Chop Master Onion could never. A tier. The next song about babies and birth is weird. I don't want to like this song, but the guitar parts of it itch my brain the right way, and it has so many notes that it's a genuine challenge to get through at some point. It's fun to play, but minus points for the whole vibe of it, and the nerds just vomiting on you majority of the time. Uh, B tier. I actually love the flight song so much. Much. It's just a total rock song, and it's so fun. The lyrics are a little off, but it's the best song in this game by far. S tier, the chainsaw level. A bear falls out of the tree if you fuck up and kills you. The song is kind of fire, and it's very intense with the guitar. A tier, the stupid fucking performance in the next level sucks dick. The lyrics make me want to blow my brains out, and the singer has the worst voice ever. It's like listening to a Panic at the Disco song. F tier, the last song in the game is pretty good. It has a nice vibe to it, and the singer for Caddy does a good job at singing, but it just seems a little lackluster for the final song of the game. Solid B tier. And that's it. I'm not ranking the Parappa songs because they are the same levels, but the guitar is just replaced with Parappa. There's one last thing I briefly want to touch on, and that's the relationship between Caddy and Lammy. If you've played the game, there's a bit of tension between the two of them, and people speculated for a long time that the two of them are dating or like each other. This was actually confirmed by the game's co-creator, Rodney Greenblatt, after he received an email asking about the topic. He replied that it wasn't the intention, but if they ever made a new game, that he would incorporate it in. Not just that, but a couple years later, for Valentine's Day, he released some art depicting the two as a couple. As for the reception of the game, people loved it. A brand new rhythm game made by Nana on Sha was something that people were anticipating and the game roughly sold around 600,000 copies. Allegedly. People were eating it up and loved the new additions that were added to the game. It currently sits at a whopping 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Still don't know why IMDb has a games review section. From this point onward, Nana on Sha were busy cooking until the big day in 2001. August 30th, what a it's time to be alive. I didn't exist yet, things were just really going in the world. And oh yeah, Parappa the Rapper 2 just released. Guys, I have bad news. We're at the last game in the franchise already. The series really took a nosedive past this point and they just never got around to making a new entry, which is really sad. The game was made for the PS2 and released in 2001. Because the game was made on a new console, you would assume that the game would look better visually or more distinct from its predecessors. And this is true. The models move and look much better. The scope becomes a lot larger in comparison to Unjammer Lemmy, but they also condensed the city into more of a town with not as many high rises and jumping to and from environments, which makes all of the levels feel fresh and different from each other. With this development, the story somehow gets more <laughs> incoherent than Unjammer Lemmy, which is really saying something. Our story begins in the same way the other two, at the movie theater watching the same movie. Um, Actually, it's the third movie in the film franchise with marks of the decline in the popularity of the movie. Parappa is with his friends, which now includes Lammy. Something happens and suddenly noodles start flowing out from the screen causing widespread panic. Parappa hides in a room and the monster from the movie finds him and tries to open the door before Parappa wakes up in his room surrounded by noodle boxes. He monologues about how miserable his life is because he has to eat noodles all day every day and the only thing that keeps him going is Sunny. Parappa runs away from Sunny's house when she, she offers him noodles. <laughs> PJ comes along with him and they talk about wanting to get a burger and it's revealed that the name of the town is Parappa Town. They go inside of the place and ask for a burger only to be greeted by fucking noodle burgers. And then Parappa has an apparition of Joe Chin for some reason. After this, the dead president's ghost flies out of a poster and makes Parappa start rapping. Outside of the restaurant, ice cream starts turning to noodles and this freaks the shit out of PJ, so they try to find Parappa's dad because He's an inventor, and he studied noodles. The game cuts to Parappa's dad and Sonny's dad saying that the noodle syndicate is taking action, so they make some weird gramophone to denoodleize everything. They try to use it, and it's a shrink ray. Parappa and PJ show up, and instead of trying to help, they watch TV and oh my fuck! The two of them also manage to shrink themselves, and then every band member from Milk Can shows up and nearly crushes the four of them before they get shrunk, and then more people get shrunk, 
and then some fucker named Guru Ant shows up, starts preaching, and then everything goes back to normal. We then cut to the Noodle Syndicate plotting their evil, evil scheme before cutting back to Parappa, who is now enlisted in the military. Nothing comes of this, and they go back to town to see everyone's hair is turning into noodles because the barber is fucking up people's cuts. Parappa and Lammy then do a crossover and destroy the barber shop, and the whole gang goes back to Parappa's house to find a dark corridor which leads to a massive underground part of the house, which means that the house is bigger on the inside than it is from the outside. They ride down a massive spiral slide and crash into a room with a bunch of old inventions. They find a weird pair of VR goggles and then put them on, which makes Parappa have to play a tennis mini game. And all while this is happening, it's literally just all out war on the outside, as literal buildings are just being turned to noodles until Parappa shows up in a car and turns them back into buildings. They find a set of wires on the ground which lead up to the massive building where the Noodle Syndicate is based. And then in a shocking twist of fate, it turns out that the leader of the Noodle Syndicate is actually the fucking kid from the burger restaurant. And his reasoning for terrorism is that he hates burgers. They have a rap battle and the kid changes his ways for the better. The end. What the fuck? The gameplay. Things have changed since the PS1 era. There's no longer a menu where you select levels. There's actually a map that you go on to go from level to level, which you slowly unlock after beating each stage. The game introduces a boom box, which teaches you how to play the game before each level, which is really nice for beginners. There sadly is no side story to this game. It's just the Parappa stuff, but they did add a PvP and PvE mode to the game meaning that there is at least some replayability. The major issue with these games, at least in my eyes, is that after listening to some of the songs for a bit, you get really tired of it, and if you fail a bunch while making your way through the game, you won't really be inclined to play it again. That's really just a nitpick though. The cool mode is back, and of course it makes the game harder by making it so that you just can't see the notes that you have to press. You just have to know what to do, and I think that was also a thing in Parappa 1, but I never got cool mode. There really isn't that much else to speak on with the game. It's fun, but I never really feel compelled to go back to it. They're all must plays if you like rhythm games, but it's a one and done deal. Side ran over. There's also bonus levels, where you go back to the fucking dojo and chop wood. And that's it! Time to rank the song. For a dead guy singing, the first song goes kinda hard. The instrumentals and lyrics are funky, and the voice actor brings so much emotion to it, and it's so fucking funny, but awesome. A tier. The next level is Chop Chop Master Onion. The vibe has completely changed in this song, and I fuck with it. I like the whole love fighting thing, it's so much fun. B tier. By the way, PJ and Parappa hold hands in this song, and that's really uh, cute. Ant Guru has the best song in the whole game. If you haven't listened to the song, please, for the love of God, go listen to it. It is my favorite track in all of these games, and it is the reason why this game stays in my head. Easy S tier. The fourth level is a weird one. I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's not my favorite either. The environments in it are really fun and creative with the whole sort of training montage-esque thing that they're going for. The coolest part about it is that the master in the level is the sister of Mussolini. B tier again. Level five is the barber shop. Honest to God, I'm not a fan of it. I like that the whole time you're just cutting people's hair into afros and milk can is playing in the back but it's not a standout. C tier. I also don't really like the video game level. The music does not hit at all, and the only interesting thing about it is that it's stylized differently. Honestly, it's a D tier. The next one is also kind of a miss. For like this big climactic battle, it's only just the inputs that are kind of difficult, and the music doesn't hit at all. It doesn't help that whenever I look and hear the Burger Kid, he just reminds me of the Science Kid, and that makes me angry. D tier again. The last song in the game is like the last song in the Parappa one. It's fun. I like the return of the DJ, and it's actually pleasant to listen to, unlike the last two songs, B tier. As for the game's reception, it actually got a slightly higher rating than Parappa 1 did, where it currently sits at a 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb. People really liked Parappa 2, and it shows even though it gets a lot less recognition than Parappa 1 does. I can't really find anything online about how many copies it sold, so boo-hoo me. I wish people talked about Parappa 2 more, because it's a much better game than Parappa 1, and it left me feeling a lot more fulfilled than the first game did. It would be a disservice to put it anywhere besides S tier. And that's it. That's the franchise.
There's nothing else to talk about, not at all. Did you guys know that in April of 2001, they made a Parappa anime? Unlike another show, <coughs> Rayman. This show ran for one season, totaling in 30 episodes. The show itself is actually pretty linear. It's just a slice of life anime showing Parappa and friends getting into different hijinks. Honestly, it's a pretty fun watch, and since it's fully on YouTube, link in the description. If you like the series and haven't seen the anime yet, you should give it a watch. The intro is really fun, and it has the characters on popsicle sticks with the song Love Together by by Nona Reeves playing in the background, which is a fire-ass song, by the way. An interesting thing to note is that there's just a whole new character added to the cast. There's a dog named Matt who just shows up and become a main character. He's pretty chill, and he's a friend of PJ. There's also Paula, who is a fox, I think. She's around. The anime also brings in Parappa's little sister, Pinto. Some bunny who steals shit, and a cat who helps the rabbit slash bunny steal things. The show didn't do well enough to warrant a second season, so there hasn't been any new episodes since its finish in 2002, which sucks. There's nothing that can be done about it. Uh, I like this show, B tier, Loki. Since then, there's been a port of the original game to PSP, which came out in 2007. That was a year after I was born, oh my god. And then, in 2017. The long-awaited remaster, which reawakened people's interest in the series, was released. I'm not gonna rank them because they're basically just the same games, and I've already talked. Uh, I've already talked about that. Uh, so there would not really be a point to it. Parappa's legacy did live on, though. While not in his own games, he made a lot of appearances in other shit. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about video game cameos again. Here we go. He was in. PlayStation All-Star Battle Royale. That's, uh, that's the end of the list. Uh, he was in that's Rock and Music Gary's Mod. <laughs> There's nothing. But that doesn't mean there wasn't merch that was made. You guys aren't ready for this for real this time. Here we go. So we got Medicom dolls, three packs of figurines, bendable toys, plushies, keychains, wind-up toys, guitar picks, allegedly guitars, but I can't find a photo of it anywhere. There was an arcade system for Unjam or Lemmy, which isn't really merch, but fuck you. CDs, alarm clocks, a toaster, a pachinko game, stickers. There was a PJ desktop background thing, kind of like Shimeji's, and if you if you know what that is. Notebooks, post-it notes, letter sets, and a whole lot more, which sadly don't have any photos attached to them. If anyone has a Parappa the Rapper yo-yo, please send me a picture of it. I need to know that it exists. And with that, we come to today. With the hindsight of the games plus the anime, Parappa the Rapper actually had a pretty good life for when it was around. A successful and incredible innovative game that transformed the landscape into what it is today. Its inspiration can be seen throughout a lot of work, and even some games expand upon its mechanics and style. When I think about this franchise, I don't see a fall off. It just happened and then it faded to time. Nothing but a memory in people's minds now. But all of this begs the question. Will there ever be a new Parappa game in the future? No. Hey guys, it's me. Uh, I'm coming down with like a cold right now, so that's why I kind of sound a little wonky in the video. Sorry. Uh, thank you for watching the slop that I made again. Like I said before, uh, like and subscribe, join the Discord, other normal shit that people say. Uh, I am tired right now. I don't know. Uh, guys, I swear the upload schedule will get better soon. I promise. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm gonna hit him with a fucking hollow purple. Fuck this guy. <laughs>